four ways British and American houses are very different. I enjoy watching the videos comparing the UK to the USA. Yeah, houses. I know there's one big difference that you guys have that we don't, and that's AC. And I'm telling you right now, I am so jealous that you guys have AC and I don't because I stream all the time on Twitch. So like when I'm streaming in the summer in the UK, oh my God, it, the room literally turns into like a sauna. It's so bad. Let's jump into this video and see the four different ways. And tea drinkers that we are, we love our kettles, don't we? But they're not just any kettles. These are ones you plug in and then hit the switch to turn on. Oh, I'll plug, get... Because I forgot to mention that our plug sockets also have switches. Oh, yeah. Hey, wait, you guys in America, you guys don't have like switches on your plug sockets, do you? Oh, that's so, that's so weird. Hello, I'm Lawrence, and I'm on a quest to uncover all of the memos that Britain and America lost in the pond, and one of those memos pertains to houses, the things we live inside. If if you're watching this video, it's quite likely you're either inside a house right now, or you're near one, because otherwise you wouldn't probably have internet <laughs> access quite as easily. Right. To anyone that might be new to this channel, come on in, get yourself I'm a inside cup house. of tea. I'm, this isn't a genuine offer to come into my house, I'm just saying, join the channel, this is good. And hello to everybody who's been here a long time. Today we're going to look at several ways in which British and American houses are very, very different. AC unit is 100% going to be States here. For over 11 years, I've lived in my fair share of houses here, just as I did in Britain. So I think I have a decent grasp of how houses Best man work. for the job. Even tiny ones like this one, which is about 400 square feet. I'm joking. This is a professional studio. <laughs> Don't question me. And so without further ado, let's take a look at four ways that British and American houses are very, very right, different. Right, let's see. Wait, the style? Britain nor America is devoid of variety when it comes to their housing styles. And that's because, well, with each sort of passing phase of history comes new designs to meet new needs and just right. new style preferences. And because of this variety, I'm not going to cover every single one of them because that would keep us all here until next Wednesday, which would be good for my metrics, but not good for your sanity. <laughs> so let's take a look at how some of the housing styles do vary from country to country. In Britain, a lot of the distinctive styles are also tied up with the period in which they were built. So right. all the way back to the Tudor period, and you do find Tudor housing dotted around here. And oh my god, I've never seen a house like that in the UK. For UK. example, there's quite a lot of sort of Tudor buildings there. They're quite ornate with wood paneling, and they're the sort of place that you might imagine that Shakespeare lived. But wood is less indicative of right. British houses than you would see in America, where wood is actually quite a common material for building houses. In Britain, from about the Georgian period onward, you're going to see quite a lot of brickwork. Uh, Georgian period houses... Wait! Wait, your guys' houses in America made of brick? Wait, 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 uh, wait, what'd you, what, what'd you mean wood? You guys got wood houses? What the? Exist. People live in them, but they tend to be these opulent looking houses. Uh, that they're no so horrible. White rectangle, which are just the windows. It's very nice. It, they look like doll's houses that you should I live in. But then from the houses. Victorian age, we started moving toward these sort of like orangey brick buildings, right? And oh, yeah. House houses, which is what Americans would call row houses. And they just look very industrial, right? You could have Why on earth did we decide to make like orange brick houses? It looks so bad. Like chimney sweep going up and getting his face covered in soot. And then we move into the Edwardian period where houses are sort of similar to those of the Victorian age. They're just lighter colours with more chimneys. Even that was bad. Poppins is anything to go by. Now, during World War II, when the Nazis bombed the ever-loving crap out of us, a lot of the houses went boom. And then after World War II, there was a housing boom. And you started to see a build-up of okay. new, more simple houses, kind of like the one I grew up in. Now, that, that's Wait. <laughs> I was gonna say, yo, yo, we're not actually living in castles, by the way. That didn't happen, um, but I did. I grew up in something more like this. Yeah. Okay. Right. You know what? These are kind of like the nicest UK houses you're going to get. And to be fair, there is more modern houses being made that do look good. So, like, we are on the come up of having really nice houses. It's just we have a lot of ugly houses. We have, honestly, probably eighty percent of the UK is an ugly house. But yeah, these are quite nice houses. For the UK, these are really nice houses. I'd be happy living in one of these. That's not Lawrence's actual house. Despite what fairy tales may suggest, most of us have never lived in a chocolate box house, but those do exist. A chocolate box house is the kind of house you might see in the Cotswolds, right? It's very quaint looking, huh? it's got thatch roofing, and it looks like this. Oh. And if like me, you're wondering why it's called a chocolate box. <laughs> I've actually seen one of them. I have. <laughs> house, yet it doesn't look edible. It goes back to the 1950s slash 60s <laughs> when chocolate boxes would have on their facade a kind of depiction of a beautiful English countryside. And 
these types of houses would right. often feature on said box. Now, yeah. again, this is by no means an entire repository of British houses. Um, neither is the following an entire repository of American houses. It's just the, the more common ones that you will see when you are here. Right. So Cape Cod houses, you know these types of houses, right? They're the ones with the wood paneling down the side. And I said a moment. Oh, wait, yeah. I was going to say, are we going to the American houses now? And 100%. I've never seen a house like this in the UK. So 100% with it um, in the America right now. Uh, this house is a. Uh... It's not too bad. It's not too bad. But like, do you know what's good about this? Even though we'll, we'll probably say that I, I think this is like probably one of the worst looking houses in America. But compared to the UK, it's really good because it's detached. There's no houses around it. It's got its own land. That's what's amazing about America. You know, America makes good use of wood in this country because there's just so much. Wait. Wait. A moment ago. So Cape Cod houses, you know these types of houses, That's right? made of the what? With the wood paneling down the side. And I said a moment ago that, you know, America mm. makes good use of wood in this country because there's just so much of it. So many uh, woodlands around the country and it's a huge country from which to pull that resource. So they do and it's cheap. But funnily enough, the Cape Cod style has its history with English settlers who came here in the 17th century and started building Cape Cod style houses. Oh, I'm England sorry. Now during the post-World War II period, partly to provide, you know, housing to veterans Wait, what are these like? War. There was a revival of Cape Cod style housing and it started to be built not just in New England but all along the East Coast and in the Midwest and even out West. Anybody that's seen the Goonies will know that. And it was this style of housing that I first moved into when I moved to the United States. And I've got to say, even despite the Midwest winters, it was really warm. You know, you'd think it would be quite drafty because of all of the gaps in the wood. You could go to specific streets or neighborhoods or areas uh -huh. in the United States and only find these houses for miles and miles. So I lived in one of those, but my grandparents-in-law lived in what is known as a ranch-style house. And these are sort of really low-down buildings, don't typically have two floors to them. And once again, these houses became popular after World War II. There was just generally a big sort of oh, wow. World War II, again, in the United States. I, I would want to live in one of them, but they, they're kind of cute. I can't like They're really big, though. Like, say it's one... Like, this is what's so good. Like, this is why you Americans are so lucky, right? Because your house has just got so much space and, like, so much room around you, like... In the UK, we're so cramped in and it's, it's so II. bad. It's generally a big sort of boom after World War II, again in the United States um, in that regard. Uh, the 20th century, though, did see more and more revivalism of old styles. So you had, you know, mock Tudor, Ooh, or shall I say, revival that's nice. Tudor, um, which more or less replicated like the kind of Tudor buildings that you would see in England with some differences. And I've seen those types of buildings in Boston, for example. I've also seen them in Indiana. As well as that, the 20th century saw colonial revivalism Ooh. of those people won't don't live in those houses maybe one day when i get that grand piano i'll i'll think about it oh that house is not that house is big i see i would like more of a modern house i've already seen a couple houses in america that i've already got my eye on um <laughs> look at me i'm already i'm already wanting to move man but uh <laughs> so i know what kind of house i'd like if i was going to move to america i already know but yeah, the, the houses over there are beautiful. So that's an extreme, a bit in the UK, rudimentary breakdown of some of the different styles that you'll see in each country. But there's one big, big difference between all of the houses in both countries, right? And it's this. ACs. Oh, they're bad. Let's Bro, face this... it. It's time to face up to some home truths. The size is the thing that gets me every single time, right? Everything's bigger in America, and it's honestly so legit. Bro, you take a UK house. And you take an American house, and bro, you could probably fit like five UK houses on the land. Probably more than five UK houses. You could probably fit like six, seven UK houses on the land of the one American house that is the same price range. So 250,000, 250,000, boom. Compared so to America, jealous. Britain is microscopic. The United yeah. States is absolutely massive and needs to be stopped. And the same is true of each country's average house size. Right, so in the United States, houses just tend to be way more spacious. And we're, right. we're not just talking about millionaire houses here. We're talking about your average house. Yeah. So the average size of an American single-family home is approximately 1,600 square feet. Okay. In the UK, we're looking at an average of about 900 square feet. So <laughs> why the difference? Well, one reason is population density. That's average size. So averagely statistically american house is double the size of a uk house statistically in britain we're just we're all a bit packed together we are actually that partially accounts for why everything is smaller in britain not everything not the cups 
But in America, there's just so much land that um, relative to that land, so oh. few people. So, you know, make them as large as you want. And they do. They're huge. But also a large love majority them. of American houses are relatively new, meaning that right. they were able to benefit from, you know, building methods and materials that other countries like Britain were not. And the more modern expansion looking. of American highways meant that this was enhanced even more. Those materials could be moved around the country more easily. And of course, this ushered in a more grand housing development. Now, all size aside, try saying that after 10 tepid tequilas. All size aside, all size aside, all size aside. Oh, wait, I haven't drank any tequilas. Why am I doing Hey, listen, one day I'll come back with 10 tequilas and I'll say Things after. become subtly different once you're inside the houses of either country. The gadgets. Is gadgets the right word? I don't know. I'll have to fire my graphics team. Either way, we're essentially talking about accessories, the things you have in your house that make that house work, even right. when you're doing the house work. So, for example, airflow, right? America's bigger on its overhead fans and air conditioning units. We don't we don't usually use those. I mean, we like to punish ourselves, especially in the summer. Bro, we, we need the them! And it doesn't get oppressively hot always and so we've mostly been fine with this situation it does mean that insects get in so daddy long legs will get in the house and mosquitoes but it's a small price to pay for not having air conditioning right Actually. like literally right now it's not boiling hot but like i'm very like like you know when you get to the point of hot where you just want to just chill and not do anything i'm that level of hot right now so making these videos like i've got no problem doing it but i'm just like i'm just a little bit hot and bothered do you know what I'm saying? And if I had an AC unit, I could be nice and cool, relaxed, not but you, you know what? I, was, I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. Because you're from America, so you guys are used to AC units. I'm not going to lie. But if anyone's from the UK watching this, you know exactly what I mean. We just get hot and bothered and it's like, if it was like sticky, if it was like sticky heat that you just, ah, oh, it's horrible, man. I need an AC unit so bad. She's quite like air conditioning now that I've lived in the US. Speaking of insects, you Wait, also what don't sting. I actually quite like air conditioning right. now that I've lived in the US. Speaking of insects, you also don't see in Britain those insect screens that you put in the windows, hence why they're getting in. In America, right. they're virtually in every house. But then again, you know, in Britain, we don't have black widows or brown recluses. Yeah, the types true. of mosquitoes that make your face go like this. So Jesus. I, I mean, you still get ants, or is that just me? Not sure how they get in. Maybe cracks in the wall or maybe through the plug sockets. The plug sockets, of course, are different in both countries too. In Britain, you have the three-pronged outlets. And in America, you sometimes have three, but occasionally, too. Oh, that looks, like, that looks like one of those shock face, you know, um, like the emoji, like, I think it's like a ghost or something like that. It's like... <laughs> but yeah, this is weird. So like, you, the reason why I say this is weird and I said it at the start, you guys are like, why is it weird? Do you know what I mean? You guys probably think ours is weird, right? Fair enough, right? Yours is weird, I buy this weird, whatever. It's because I'm not really too bothered about it. But most of, most people think it's like an electric hazard if you don't turn the switch off because it's constantly running electric right so like what if somebody was going to come here or like a little kid for example and stick some metal thing in there like, like foil i don't know like a sweet wrapper boom when they get electrocuted when they just fry up like when the, when the kid be uh fried <laughs> whereas like in the uk you turn off the switches if that does happen there's no electric going to it you know what i mean so like I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. What, what, what's the science behind this? And they're smaller in America than they are in Britain. That's one of the few things about which you can say that. Uh, separate taps oh, wow. for hot and cold water. Americans combine them all into one. Where's the logic in that? I'm joking. And while we're on... The Wait, no, 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 no. He just said in the UK, we have separate tap water things, right? Okay, old houses do, but new houses don't. So I've not lived in a house yet where there have been separate taps. I think when I was like 10 years old, my parents had separate, separate taps, taps, but they got them changed. But from me being 10, I've not lived in a house yet where they've been separate. So it's just one now. So it's, it is an old thing in the UK. We did do it, but I think it's now like everyone's getting a singular tap because that makes sense. Why would you have two taps? Because you turn on the hot, you turn on the cold. You go put your hands in boiling hot and then in cold, like there's no mixture, right? The one tap, 
you get to adjust it. On the subject of sinks, um, most British sinks don't have that sort of food waste disposal thing that you press the button and it does the noise. Amazing. That was one of the best things I discovered after me. I didn't oh! discover it. Somebody else came up with the idea and I just used it. Yo, this in kitchens is so good, right? I've only ever known one house in my life that's had that in the UK, right? And I had no clue what it was. So I was putting my food away and it was a very, very, very nice kitchen. Like it was proper done out, very expensive. And I went there, I put my food in uh, and I, when I went to the sink, the person said to me, they was like, oh, you could put your food in the sink. I'm like, wait, what? <laughs> huh? <laughs> what do you mean? And then she was like, no, 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 like this part. So like you got the sink and then you got a smaller part. She was like, this part. I was like, huh? So I put, I put my food in the, in the whatever this was. I've never seen it in my life, right? I, it, it just looks like a mini sink. And then she pressed the button and it was like, Rrr. and then the food was gone. Like it just munched up the food. I have, I have no clue where the food went. The food was gone. It was the best thing I've ever seen in my life. I didn't have to scrape it into a bin or whatnot. Yeah, that's the only time I've ever seen that in the UK. I don't know why houses aren't built with it. I don't know why more houses don't have it. It's very, 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 very rare. But yeah, if, if I ever like have enough money to build my own house, that is 100% going in my kitchen. 1000%. But it's amazing. It's just so pleasing to know that all of that gunk gets broken down. And yeah. Just don't put your hamster in there. That <laughs> I've learned that lesson from someone else. I didn't do it. Just read about it on Reddit. Wait, what? Letterboxes. Firstly, Americans don't call them letterboxes, but mailboxes and typically don't have them on the door, but outside in the garden, yard. The garden slash yard is different. Often smaller in Britain, but right. very well kept up, depending on the family. And just <laughs> massive yards here with, you know, mesh fences and things like that, or picket fences. Uh, back inside, a lot of properties in the They United got a lot States of space walk-in closets that are built into the actual walls of the house see that would be cool Britain, you bring your own closet slash wardrobe yeah. to put your clothes in and that wow our houses suck compared to you guys like our houses actually suck man jesus just like every small aspect we're just doing it wrong that takes up more space i've just realized so we're shooting ourselves in the foot every step of the way. Except when it comes to washing machines and dryers. How cool is this? We combine them both into one giant cube. Whereas America has two separate cubes. And tea drinkers that we are, we love... Wait. You guys have a different washer to dryer? Wait, why? Why? I suppose you got the room for it, fair enough. For our kettles, don't we? But they're not just any kettles. These are ones you plug in and then hit the switch to turn on because well, I forgot to mention that our plug sockets also have switches and then you know you turn it on don't need a stove top and it heats up just like that you've got your water Bob's your uncle pour it into a mug there's your cup of tea oh wait yeah in America when you guys make a cup of tea I don't know how often you guys have a cup of tea but if you ever need a boil kettle you do it on the stove don't you oh that's so much effort yeah, we just have kettles to turn on a switch, boom, it boils. In America, you do have the stovetop kettles, and part of me likes that because it, it does this really pleasing whistling sound at the end. Now, oh. if you're paying attention during that list, you may have noticed that I touched on some of the terminological differences when it comes to housing in either country. Uh, and that brings us on to our final entry. The words. It wouldn't be Britain and America if they weren't two countries separated by a common language. And the true. same is true of the housing world. So let's... Oh, I'm getting it so much. Uh, a lot of you guys recently are coming into my streams on Twitch. And you guys are like... I've seen so many people say, Oh, wow, UK slang is so funny. Oh, UK slang, UK slang, UK slang. So like, you guys are coming into my streams. And you are harassing me about the way I say words. Listen, we both speak English. But sometimes I'm going to say things differently to how you say it. It is what it is. You got, you just got to accept it. You just got to accept it. it. They are enjoying it. We are having fun with it. If you guys want to come over and have a chat with me, you can do over there. It's twitch.tv forward slash alpha number G. Um, yeah, we, 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 have a, we have fun chats. We, we really do. And we react to some stuff over there as well. Finish with a rapid fire round looking at those very words. So here in Chicago, I live in a flat. Except in America, they don't call it flat. It's called an apartment. Oh, wait. Something we also you'll find... Wait, I call it apartment. Yo, I swear, like, I'm, like, half and half. I've never been America, right? And I've only recently started, like, reacted to America stuff, like, a month. 
but so be, but before I started reacting to America's stuff, right? I I call it apartment. I swear I've just always been 50-50 American, and I wonder if it's because like my whole life has been gaming and like YouTube and all that stuff. So. And in America, though, are these condominiums or condos, if you don't fancy saying a word that has condom in it. And we Wait, do what? have those in Britain. They're just the What's usual a common hold properties. And I suppose most British people huh? wouldn't go around What's using that term. Whereas you actually hear the term condo quite a lot. It's been suggested to me that I move into a condo. And it sounds good. I mean, when I first heard the term, I thought I was, it sounded like I might be moving onto a, a lake. What's a condo? Like it is like an apartment, but it's one you would buy. It's real estate. Now, as a child oh. and young adult, I grew up in a house that was known as a semi-detached house. That's when you have right. a house adjoined to one other house on one side, but not on the other side. In the United States, this is known quite simply as a duplex, which is not a wrestling move. If it is adjoined <laughs> on both sides with another house, then you are part of a line of houses that are known as terrace, terrace houses house. in Britain. In America, there are a lot of them. row houses because... Row. They're all in a row, presumably. <laughs> then there's council housing in Britain versus the projects in the United States. And that's just another way of saying public housing. Oh, that's what the projects is. See, I heard people say the projects, but I thought it was just like a, like a term for like an area. Like, well, yeah, it's kind of his council estate, but that's, that's the equivalent to council estate. Okay, that's why the projects are rough as hell then. Because council estates are rough as hell. <laughs> to control the electricity flow in Britain, you have the mains power. In America, you have the grid power. And what if you're sick and grid tired of the sick. place that you're living in and you just want to relocate somewhere else? In America, you would just simply move. In Britain, you'd move house. And on that note, I'm going to move America. And what if you're sick and tired of the place that you're living in and you just want to relocate somewhere else? In America, you would just simply move. In Britain, you'd move house. Oh, it's like an American be like, oh, I'm moving. Where's like a British person would be like, oh, I'm moving house. Is that, is that what you're saying? And on that note, I'm going to move out to my outro transition because this is the end of the video. Let me know in the comments below if you're watching this from your... Cool, cool, cool. What a way to make me jealous even more about America. I ain't going to lie. I absolutely love and prefer your houses. If I had the choice, I would literally move there in a heartbeat compared to the UK. I was talking to my viewers on Twitch yesterday about like my top four locations where I want to live. So be interested to see where you guys would like to move to. Like, what kind of states would you like to live in? Or if you'd like to move abroad, let me know. Well, my top four places have to be Australia, Canada, America, and Norway. I would literally move to any of them in a heartbeat other than the UK. Really cool video. Enjoyed it a lot. Hopefully you guys enjoyed it as well. If you did, make sure you leave a thumbs up, subscribe for more content. I'll see you all in the next video. Peace.